would like to say good afternoon and welcome to our annual meeting. I am Chris Sorchik, the Executive Director of Capital Area Healthy Start Coalition. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, today, I'm going to give you all an overview of our five-year service delivery plan the work completed on the service delivery plan this past year, including the accomplishments and provide an overview of the work we will be doing this upcoming fiscal year. So a little bit of history um, as it relates to our five-year service delivery plan. The Capital Area Healthy Start Coalition had a 23-member needs assessment team who worked on various aspects of our needs assessment in 2019 and 2020 to provide the foundation for our comprehensive assessment of the needs and gaps in services that impact birth outcomes and the health and well-being of pregnant women, infants, and children in Wakulla and Leon counties. As part of our needs assessment process, we researched and compiled an inventory of local resources and services to identify programs, resources, and services that are available locally for moms, babies, and families in our community, and to identify unmet needs that would be addressed through our coalition. Our coalition identified through this rigorous process that one of the unmet needs locally is access to medical and mental health services prior to, during, and after pregnancy. Our community has some services available in this area, but not all of them are available to all families. For example, families without mm -hmm. adequate health insurance or the ability to pay cannot access medical and mental health mm -hmm. services. Racial disparities in health was evident as an issue as shown in the pregnancy outcome disparities in our two counties. Community-wide efforts in improving maternal and child health have been ongoing, but barriers exist to creating a community holistic approach to improving the health and lives of all moms, babies, and families. Our community also identified a stronger need locally to address the issue of pregnant women using substances that can result in substance exposed newborns and an increased abuse and neglect of children. I'd like to take a minute to express a special thank you to our service delivery plan team. There were approximately 40 people who contributed to the work that has been done this past year. We had representatives from FAMU and FSU, local prenatal, prenatal provider offices, Capital Health Plan, TMH, the Greater Frenchtown Revitalization Council, the Florida Department of Health in both Leon and Wakulla counties, Healthy Families Florida, Kids Incorporated, the Florida Perinatal Quality Collaborative, the Department of Children and Families, Simply Healthcare, 211 Big Bend, a perinatal mental health counselor, the Northwest Florida Health Network, Florida Behavioral Health Impact, and Melanin Mothers Meet. Their donation of time and commitment to moms and babies of Leon and Wakulla counties was instrumental in the progress we made this first year. Our service delivery plan has three key priority areas we're for focusing on. Access to care, which incorporates all and any and all barriers, our prenatal women, postnatal women, and preconceptional women and families of infants and children have that hindered their process of obtaining medical and mental health services locally. We are addressing racial disparities in health outcomes in efforts to reduce the infant mortality rate disparities. For the years 2017 to 2019 in our catchment area, the infant mortality rate of black women was 10.8 per 1,000 live births compared to 4.1 per 1,000 live births for white women. In 2020, the infant mortality rate in Leon County was 14.5 for black women compared to 5.0 for white women. In Wakala County, there were no infant deaths to black mothers in 2020, but there were three infant deaths for white women. Causes of the disparity are multifaceted and our service delivery plan is solution focused in efforts to help bridge this gap. Since substance use and mental health is, I'm sorry, since substance use is a mental health issue and can result in newborn substance exposure in utero, our third 
priority area combines maternal mental health with substance exposed newborns. If moms with mental health issues recognized when they need help and got the help they needed, this could improve birth outcomes and decrease child abuse and neglect. Goals, objectives, and action steps were created for each of the priority areas. The priority area goals and objectives are not going to change over the next five years. We don't expect them to change anyway. The work groups will evaluate and update action plan steps for each fiscal year based on the work that had been completed, new strategies created, and partners engaged. So to recap a little bit about our access to care work group, um, this group identified two main goals for this key priority area. Goal one, all women of childbearing age have easy access to quality health care. Goal two, increase community awareness and understanding of the system of care for pregnant women and infants. We had four objectives under goal one identify and create achievable solutions for barriers to quality healthcare, provide education to our local women about the resources available to them for quality healthcare in Leon and Wakala counties, provide community members who are uninsured or underinsured with information on how to obtain medical care at low or no cost. And lastly, we want to galvanize and expand our community partnerships between organizations and entities who can assist with reducing barriers for our families. Our four objectives under goal two include educating the community about local resources and tools that support healthy pregnancies and infants, and making sure we educate those who work with our pregnant women and families with infants, including other community agencies, the faith-based community, and the healthcare providers. There were 37 action steps for year one as we worked towards our goals and objectives. Some of the successes this past year from this group, we started um, our work with exploring the resource directories currently available for pregnant women and families with children birth to age three. The group discovered that navigating these resource directories were difficult and decided to create a directory that would reside on the Capital Area Healthy Start website. The group spent several months creating a comprehensive list of local resources for pregnant women and families with children birth to age three. Information gathered included local information on low cost or no cost medical and dental care, transportation, housing, food, employment, child care, and education resources, information on the Medicaid plans in our area, legal services, and mental health resources. Once the list was created, we discussed the importance of easy access for our families, which led to a Capital Area Healthy Start website remodel, along with the creation of a condensed emergency resource list for community partners to use with clients who may not have access to the website and need to contact someone right away. The work of this group led to the collaboration with our local hospital and the Florida Department of Health in Leon County to ensure our families are not being over-surveyed. We developed new partnerships with local private insurance companies and successfully surveyed the prenatal care providers. The provider surveys were designed to give providers an opportunity to let our community know what they were finding as the reasons for some of the of their patients not attending their prenatal or postpartum appointments or for not following through with referrals and lab work. Their insight was extremely valuable in helping us determine barriers to care from the medical provider perspective, and we thank them very much for their input. We actually had several, I think eight out of 11 providers completed the survey, which was phenomenal. The racial disparities in health outcomes work group identified three goals for the upcoming five years. Goal one, reduce the number of preterm and low birth weight babies born to black women. Goal two, provide resources to empower all women to take control of their health to improve pregnancy outcomes. And goal three, establish collaborative partnerships to provide diversity, equity, and inclusion education to maternal health care providers. There are four main objectives under goal one, including increasing the number of black women who enter care in their first trimester, 
providing education to both Black men and Black women about the impact of risk factors on future pregnancies and infant health, the importance and impact of men's health on pregnancy and birth outcomes, and we want to see an increase in referrals into services for Black women with identified risk factors for adverse pregnancy outcomes. The objectives under goal two include providing community education regarding the importance of preconception and prenatal care and how they influence maternal health and pregnancy outcomes, providing resources and tools that help enhance women's prenatal care and pregnancy outcomes, educating the community about how social determinants of health impact maternal health and pregnancy outcomes in Black women, and educating Black women and men on the importance of breastfeeding and the community resources available for breastfeeding and lactation support. The goal three objectives include identifying those with expertise in healthcare disparities to assist in incorporating diversity, equity, and inclusion principles into the healthcare workforce and encouraging education of healthcare providers about implicit bias. There were 28 action steps this first year as we worked towards the goals and objectives of this work group. The key successes in the Racial Disparities for Health Outcomes work group included the launch of a preconception health lunch and learn series in February. The first session included an introduction to preconception health. From there, the group provided sessions on important aspects of preconception health, including nutrition, sexual health, and mental health. In June, we had an introduction to men's preconception health and plan to continue the preconception health lunch and learn series through the fall. Uh Members of the group wrote a women's preconception health plan, which is currently being turned into a facilitator's guide and handouts to use in our community. Group members also met with experts for men's preconception health and identified those who we need to work with in order to create a preconception health education plan for men. We strengthened our relationships with FAMU and FSU around health equity and developed new relationships with local African-American owned businesses. We provided education to the community on empowerment and how to reduce C-section rates and the coalition launched the Sister Friends Tallahassee Birthing Project. Our last work group, the Maternal Mental Health and Substance Exposed Newborn Work Group, identified two main goals for the next five years. Goal one, ensure women of childbearing age in Leon and Wakulla counties are aware of maternal and mental health issues and have access to quality mental health services. Goal two, ensure women of childbearing age in Leon and Wakulla counties are aware of the adverse effects of substance use on pregnancy outcomes in healthy infants. The two objectives under goal one include working with community partners to identify women and mothers who experience depression and other mental health issues and work with community partners to increase the number of pregnant women and mothers who access mental health services. The objectives under goal two include educating women of childbearing age about risks of substance use and where they can receive intervention services and educate the community about the risk of substance use on pregnancy outcomes and the health of infants. There were 13 action steps this first year as we worked towards these goals and objectives. Successes for this work group. The members of this group spoke to all prenatal care providers to find out what assessment tools, if any, the providers were using to screen women for depression and substance use. It was discovered that most of the providers were utilizing a tool to screen women for depression and no providers are utilizing a tool for substance use screening. This group worked with the Florida Perinatal Quality Collaborative and the Florida Behavioral Health Impact to identify which tool should be used and advocated for use. We facilitated a training about providing bereavement 
services to women who have a pregnancy or infant loss, participated in FSU's Florida Maternal Mental Health Collaborative, and the group had an informational session from a community that has a substance-exposed newborn task force, identified the need locally, and created a plan to host an inaugural meeting in our community for a regional substance-exposed newborn task force. As you've heard, a lot have, of work has been done. And although we as a community have addressed 78 action steps this first year, we have a lot more work to do in order to meet our five-year goals. We have developed action steps for year two that should bring us closer to achieving these goals. So going back to the Access to Care work group, this group will be focusing on digging deeper into these issues as it relates to women accessing prenatal care. Anytime there's a survey, we hear from the community that transportation is a major barrier. We know that there are options for families when it comes to transportation. For example, if you are on Medicaid, your plan has transportation for you but there are barriers to use, utilizing this transportation. This work group is dedicated to sitting down with the Medicaid plans, the transportation disadvantage programs, and other transportation programs in Leon and Wakulla counties to learn about their transportation policies and work with them to address barriers within their programs. Transportation affects more than just our pregnant women and their families, so we would like to work cross-sector with partners to address this issue. If you know of someone we should bring into this conversation, please let me know. We will also be talking with the private insurance companies this year to find out more about benefits available to pregnant women and uh, for their pre prenatal care and postpartum care through their programs. Once we have all that information gathered, we will develop an education campaign on health insurance options and coverages for prenatal and postnatal care. This group will also be developing educational campaigns about the importance of prenatal care and quality health care. The Racial Disparities in Health Outcomes Workgroup will be focusing on the preconception health education plans for both women and men. We are partnering with the Griffin Heights Neighborhood First Plan to get community input on the Women's Preconception Health Education Plan that was written this year. Once we have received community input, we will modify and finalize our plan and hold small group workshops on women's preconception health in the Griffin Heights community. This work group will continue developing an education plan focusing on men's preconception health. Additionally, a web page will be created to host educational material developed for the Black community, and the materials created will be disseminated to the community through community outreach events and provider outreach. The Maternal Mental Health Substance Exposed Newborns work group will be creating educational material for providers on depression screening, including information on the signs of depression, a script to use while addressing concerns with patients, and a list of billable codes providers can submit for depression screening. This group will collaborate with the Leon County Behavioral Health Navigator, work to increase bereavement services locally for families who've experienced an infant or fetal loss, and create an education campaign about substances and the effects substances have on the developing fetus. Additionally, we hope to host an inaugural meeting of a regional substance exposed newborn task force. As you've heard, there is a lot of work to be done in our key priority areas. We are looking for community partners to join our Community Partnership Alliance and our various work groups. This is a collaborative effort and it will take the community to come together in order to create change for our families. If you're interested in joining, please drop your name in the chat with the work group you're interested in joining or you can email me um, and my email is on the screen there. Are there any questions or comments about the service delivery plan or any suggested changes on the work that we will be doing this upcoming year? I'm going to stop sharing so I can see everybody. Chris, this is Ashley from Florida. Hi. 
Hi, Ashley. Yes, thanks for inviting us. And we are just excited to hear about this program. And I think that it, it sounds amazing. And we are grateful to get to be a part of it in any way that we can support this initiative and work towards the health of our mothers and babies in the future. You're on mute, Chris. I do that all the time. <laughs> it's usually me. I don't know what happened. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. we can hear you now. And it's Shalanda, social worker here Shalanda, at Florida Blue. I'm sorry about that. My, my <laughs> mic didn't show up on mute. But for those of you who don't know, Shalanda and Ashley are with Florida Blue. And I have been um, working with Shalanda quite a bit the last couple of months and very excited to continue our partnership and bring them into our Community Partnership Alliance group. So very excited to meet with you all, um, hopefully soon, and get a tour of that lovely Florida Blue Retail Center right across the road from us. Should be getting an email soon that we can confirm. Wonderful. Sure. Anyone else who wants to join, always welcome to. Yes, come on over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, suggested changes for our work groups as we're looking at addressing these key priority areas? You all are a quiet bunch. It's because you're doing such a great job, Chris. Thank you so much. <laughs> there you go. And, and so then I will also say it's great every once in a while to look back and see everything that we've, all of us have accomplished in a year. It's been busy, but there's a, with a wonderful group of partners who are making a difference and it's really gratifying to see. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. It, it is gratifying to see. And when I went through and we're, we were working on updating our service delivery plan and pulling together the list of everybody who had an impact this last year, it was very exciting and kind of humbling to see us all coming together as a community to um, work to create change and change the story for our moms locally. So I appreciate every one of you who have had a part in that. And we are looking for more partners and it's it's going to take more partners. Um, these are some pretty lofty goals that we're trying to address when it comes to accessing care, making sure all women have access to quality, quality health care. And they're attending their appointments and going to their referrals and having their lab work done. Reducing that racial disparity gap that we continue to see in our counties. That's a, that's something that we've been working on for years and we need to change how we are approaching that issue. Um, and then maternal mental health now more than ever. It's, it's these women need access to services. So we can't do it alone, which means every single person um, who is on this meeting, it plays such an important role in impacting and influencing change in our community. Are there any suggested action steps that you all would like to see us kind of tackle this next year? We went from a very broad 78 action steps and we're kind of narrowing our focus this next year. Um, like I said, to dig deeper in a couple of these areas. But if anybody has any suggestions, we would love to hear them. Chris, I have a question. Is Healthy Start partnered with United Way? We are partnered with United Way, okay. yes ma'am. Thank you. I was you. thinking of, about the transportation you were talking about if there were monies available for it to fund that part of your program. Yeah, that that's a good thought. Um, we need to circle back to the United Way. The other um, group that we had 
um, talked with was 211 Big Bend was looking for some funding that they could um, utilize for their elderly population, which would free up some of their funding for this group for um, pregnant women. So um, we'll circle back with Summer to see where she's at on that as well. Oh, yes, because that's where I got the information from the seniors. It was from Summer, so yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> Um, let me see the chat here. <clears throat> Thank you. You thanks everybody for thanks. I appreciate it. I appreciate all you do. Um, Monica would love to see what the education guide is looking like that we sent over to, um, Miss Jessica and FSU is working on that yet. And I don't have a copy of that yet, Monica. And Trishay says, I think this year has been a great step to opening doors for more fathers to participate. Absolutely. We want to get more men involved when it comes to um, even preconception health um, and prenatal care for our families and just helping to support their partners and them having their support too. We, we know that dads um, do suffer as well from postpartum depression. Um, and making sure that story is being told and fathers are getting the resources that they need. Any other comments, questions, suggestions? Okay, so we do have a draft of the full service delivery plan that we will email out to you all. It includes... Um, the progress that was made on all of the action steps this past year. And it includes the new action steps that were reviewed for the upcoming year. And we'll make sure that you all get a copy of that. If there are no suggested changes um, or concerns, we are gonna go ahead and submit that probably in the next couple of weeks to the Department of Health. So they have um, an updated guide to what our area is going to be doing to support our moms and babies locally. Um, if you all have any comments, questions, suggestions after the meeting today, please don't hesitate to reach out. If you would like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting just to hear more about what we've been doing and um, talk more about the work groups that we have and see which work group would be a fit for you, I would love to meet with you. So please reach out. Okay, well, I am going to um, go ahead and turn the meeting over to our um, board chair, Miss Audrey Moore. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for coming. And thank you for everything uh, that you've done to help support our service delivery plan in the coalition this year. Um, so this is my last meeting that I'll be presiding over as board president. Um, it's it's really been an honor to be a part of this organization and, and feel like I could do something to help support the work that so many people are doing um, in some small way. Um, I'm really proud of the work that we've done the last year and several years. Um, I, 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 know, I know we're gonna continue on the right road. Uh, I mean, between our, our transition to, um, our contract with the Children's Home Society and the in instituting the Sister Friends program, we've just taken so many strides in the right direction. Um, I'm, I'm so excited about what's on the horizon for us with possibly doula programs and new community partnerships with, um, with all the great organizations in, in our region. Um, so my year as president, my goal was kind of to help create a foundation for the board and the organization um, 
so that our team could actually focus on the work um, and, and not maybe get too tied up in, in uh, the structure and process. That's the, the boring, uninteresting stuff that I like, but uh, not everybody wants to get bogged down in that. So that was, that was kind of what I wanted to accomplish this year. And I think we, we really went down the right road with that. We got a lot done, um, you know, kind of revising committee groups and looking at how we would work alongside the service delivery plan groups and updates to bylaws and, you know, um, kind of more defining the roles and what everybody is expected to do. Um, so it's not flashy, but I know it's the it's an important first step in good responsible growth. So um, my only regret that I would say over my last year is that we weren't able to start all the kind of fun board events to kind of bring us together and you know, meet people outside of our Zoom boxes and talk about non-board things for a few minutes so that we all kind of know each other a little better. Um, but, you know, COVID, so, you know. <laughs> um, but I was really hoping that we could start that this year. Um, we're almost there, I guess. Um, as, as some of you know, Today was supposed to be held in person and as a board social so that we could hang out and snack and, you know, take off work early, maybe have a drink, whatever. Um, <laughs> but we will do that soon. Um, I know our, our next slate of officers and our president, Monica, will help walk us through this return to kind of some in-person and maybe we'll get to meet you guys in person. Um, you know, I've I know you guys from the shoulders up, but I want to know what everybody does outside of our board meetings sometimes. So, um, well, and that brings me to my last order of business as board president, which is to introduce our slate of officers for the 2022-23 year. Um, so you have, a, they're on your screen, but <laughs> for formality's sake, I'll go ahead and announce them. And you can imagine that I have a a gavel that I'm gonna pass. Um, so Dr. Monica Hayes um, will be our new president starting Friday, which means I will be our new past president, which is a fun job. Um, Monica would love to say hello and thank you to all of you as well, but unfortunately she does, doesn't have a voice today. So um, by the next meeting, I'm sure. <laughs> um, our president-elect is Miss Betsy Wood. Thank you, Betsy, for agreeing to serve. Um, we're all looking forward to your leadership as well. Um, LaCrest Reed, who is not able to be here today, but she will be uh, in her second year as our secretary. And our treasurer will be Jennifer Zephyr. Um, so rolling off of our, our um, executive committee this year will be April Lynn and Deborah Dowds. And I wanna take this opportunity to thank the two of them for all the work that they've put in um, over the last two and three years on our executive committee. You know, we've, we've covered a lot of ground, we've talked about a lot of things, we've worked through a lot of stuff. Um, and that's all in addition to the, the other things that we all do um, both for this organization and on our own. So um, thank you, everybody. That's it. Thank you, Audrey. Well, that concludes the business part of our meeting today, um, but I will stay on for a little bit. If anybody has any questions um, that you didn't want to ask previous or if anything came to your mind as Audrey was talking, um, I would love to answer any questions you all have about the work of the coalition, about the service delivery plan, um, et cetera. We probably should take this opportunity to mention that we will be having our angel awards in August. And I would love to see all of you there. It will be an in-person event. So if we don't all see each other before then, we could at least see each other in August um, to help support a good cause. Thank you, Audrey. August 18th, please mark your calendars. August 18th at Bradley's Pond. 
and we are honoring the work of Ms. Maisha Mitchell, Dr. Amandala Shabaka Hayes, and the Leon County EMS, who partners with us to offer free infant CPR classes to our families um, to make sure that should the unthinkable happen, they know what to do. Miss Deborah. I just wanted to um, just add another um, thank you to the partners, um, the Alliance partners who were on um, this call today, the Zoom call, and those that aren't, that have participated in our work group meetings and our Alliance meetings. Uh, I just can't begin to tell you how important your participation is to the work we do. This is not just a healthy start plan. This is a community plan. And um, we really um, treasure your involvement and need your involvement. And so I just wanted to um, offer an additional thank you to you. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, the time for the Angel Awards is 5.30, 5.30 to 9. That was a question that just came through the chat. Simone did drop a flyer in our chat um, about our Angel Awards. You can go ahead and click on that link. Just... Lots of thanks to Ms. Okay, thank you, Simone. Yep, tickets are on sale now. And we have a raffle that will be starting um, tomorrow, Simone. Is that going to go live tomorrow or after the, the July holiday? first? Okay. Dr. Harrison, I will be reaching out to you about the Alliance. Thank you very much. I, I didn't realize work groups too, but yeah, let's get me an update. They got me running, <laughs> but I appreciate you. Thank you. We'll, we'll get you connected. Okay. And if, if there is somebody that you don't see with us today that you're wondering um, about having them join our work groups and our alliance, please please make that connection for me. I would love to sit and meet with them and talk with them about the work that we are doing. Absolutely. Well, thank you everybody for attending. Audrey, thank you so much for your leadership this past year. Thank you to all the board members for your leadership. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much to the Alliance um, partners again. Um, I truly value all of the work that you do. Um, as Deborah said, it, it takes all of us. Healthy Start can't do it alone. We need all of you and we need more community partners who are willing to work alongside of this to create change for our families. So that being said, I will let you all get on to your evenings. I hope you have a fabulous um, evening and a safe, happy, healthy holiday weekend. Thank you all. <laughs>